this public hearing is 615. The public hearing to obtain final citizen input on the Federal Emergency Management Agency, known as FEMA, Carnes, Wilson County's multiple jurisdiction hazard mitigation action plan, HAZMAT, to be submitted to FEMA upon final required public meeting and local governing board meeting final review. Okay. I read that and I don't know if anybody has any questions, but if, I mean, my biggest concern is We let Big Brother in, and that could be a great deal. I, I don't know. But are they going to come up with all kinds of rules and regulations when we do stuff where it costs citizens? You know, if a business wants to come in, are they going to say, you got to do this, to this, to this? I mean, this, we, this pertains to uh, the mitigation plans on if. If we have a catastrophe as Rockford, okay, and basically it, it wipes out half the town, yeah. okay, this pertains to emergency management, which pertains to on our list uh, 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 to do are roughly $2.5 million to reshape and, and Increase the depth of the Stockdale channel. That's one one of the degrees. The other is standby generation for the community building, the wastewater plant, the water plant, and the firehouse. Next thing is to replace the two older bridges on Eighth Street and the one that's washed out. That's roughly five hundred thousand dollars for the two two hundred fifty thousand dollars a piece. Uh, the next portion was uh, uh, purchasing uh, property still in the floodplain, which would be considered uh, the old grain bins that John Troy Henry, that, what is his name, Tenyete? Tenyete. Tenyete owns and Rodney's parcel. Those are the only two parcels out of a 10 to 15 year plan that are still remaining that when we started in 2000, or 1998, and then FEMA beginning in 2000 that are left on the deal. And as I quoted to the council multiple times, that that was supposed to be in conjunction with FEMA and the federal government about purchasing properties. Well, the city purchased the properties, but we, we didn't get any assistance from anybody. We took care of tending to the floodplain and cleaning the underbrush out and tending to the waterway or whatever but it was on our own nickel we got. But these are things that are listed on this plan that if they're not, if you don't have a plan and FEMA comes, there's no monies available what uh, to take care of it. You, you, you had to have a plan to be able, if there ever is an occurrence, that you can submit this in a expeditious manner for funds to become available. That's all that pertains to. It doesn't have anything uh, stated about uh, the flood levels, flood others, and such as that. Okay. And then I have a meeting on July the 10th <clears throat> at emergency management that pertains to uh, emergency housing, like if the community building comes under uh, shelter and different things that we plan for assisting housing, and such as that. In, in those discussions, where in our county are things that are available for housing assistance? That we have a tornado that comes through town and, and takes care of, you know, a third of the residents in our community. Where do these people go? <coughs> and, you know, and let's t say that it takes out the hotel and that our the different uh, auxiliary housing that we have. Where, where we're going to try to house these people and how they're going to have a system. That's what that means. But in uh, regards to your concerns over uh, Big Brother being all this uh, mitigation and stuff that we put together, for instance, from the county standpoint is if we lose so many miles of roadway where the 
system's going to come to be able to put those back in, in the favor or whatever. Because out of, what was it, 2016, I think they qualified for like $1.2 million in the system through FEMA and replacing those county loads and such as that. Same way with the uh, city of Floresville out of that 2016 day, I think it was a half a million dollars they received in assistance for putting back electrical power lines and different such as that. And out of that was out of the plan that was already in assistance that was in place for those funds to come this way. We are. In other words, the old plan was obsolete and it was over 10 years old. And so this is a new one in conjunction with uh, Corn County. Since we're already part of it, why do we need to vote to become part of the movement? Yes. Oh. Yes, ma'am. And this is a public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Jiffy. I was when I was reading this about drilling on city property. I guess Lillian doesn't have this. this was, before it's time, most of that was in the railway property. And see, we don't own mineral rights. At all. Uh -uh. I just pulled, pulled my back before to really see those pump jets. So it's really on the mineral rights. The, uh, the individuals do, but under all the the industrial park, the railroad property that we purchased, I have to go back and check on Mrs. Bark, but I think Mrs. Bark retained her mineral rights out of that city park, the railroad properties retained by uh, Southern Pacific, and Mrs. Roden still owns the mineral rights to Is there any more public comments on this item? If not, we will adjourn this public hearing and wait till 6.30 to start our regular city council meeting. Is it raining?